Shalom, shalom, shalom. Wow, it's, it's another week that God has given us uh, to be able to share what God has in store in our hearts. And uh, I thank God for what He has done in the previous um, program. And this is the second time and I am so excited for what God is going to do uh, today in this program. But today I'm not going to be alone. I am here with my uh, two of my favorite people. And one of them is God's power and another one is Senor. And later on, a little bit later on, they'll be sharing with us uh, more about assignments and what God has really installed in their heart um, uh, to this nation here in Korea or even around the world. And as well, uh, we're going to have fun because I really want this uh, session not to be too serious. But I want it to be, I want it to be fun. I want it to be full of glory, you know, yeah. full of uh, presence of God and full of laughter. You know what I mean? So just before I start, why don't we introduce ourselves, like starting with GP, you know, who are you, where are you coming from, and, you know, just just in one minute. Oh, okay, okay. Well, my name is God's Power. Um, I'm from Nigeria, but I've lived in Korea for almost six years. And uh, what I do here is I, I'm a worshiper. I go around worshiping and singing songs all to glorify God's name and uh, I'm really happy to be here and I'm, I'm excited for what we're about to talk about. Mm, that's amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Great. Lovely people of God. Um, I like he rightly introduced me. My name is Senyo. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. So uh, God's power and I are neighbors actually mm -hmm. uh, from West Africa and mm -hmm. uh, I've been in Korea for close to three years now mm -hmm. and I've been studying uh, my for my master's degree mm -hmm. and aside that that just like God's power said um, mm -hmm. one paramount thing that is so dear to our hearts is worship mm -hmm. and we've been uh, in ministry for the mm -hmm. past two years I think right yeah. mm -hmm. and it's been so amazing yeah. and I think that connects well so much to what you're about to talk about mm -hmm. in terms of assignments mm -hmm. and for me personally um, Realizing that I had an assignment before coming here mm -hmm. played a very key role mm -hmm. in the things I've been able to do in Korea wow. so far. So mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be on the line today with you guys and to share with you. Mm -hmm. Wow, this this is amazing. Actually, uh, just to let you know, guys, uh, Senyo and God's power. Uh, when I'm talking about God's power, I don't mean like God. This guy, his name is God's power. <laughs> his name is God's power. Like that, his original name. You know, his dad gave it like God's power name, which is very interesting. But talking about God's power and saying, you know, these are, are two of the um, uh, powerful worship leaders here in South Korea. And God has been using them in such a mighty way through one of the, uh, one of the worship team called In His Presence. You know, all these names, they're very interesting. Like his name is God's power and the name of the team is His Presence. And they've been serving the Lord here. And a lot of people have been uh, meeting God, have been encountering God in the way that we cannot explain. Actually, myself, I had an opportunity to serve with them last year. And I saw uh, the move of God. Like surely God is moving here in South Korea through these two young men. And I'm so excited because today they'll be sharing the, the assignment that God has given them and, and how they are doing it and how, how, how they're seeing God is leading them for, uh, for the generations to come or for youth here in Korea or for even for their family. By the way, they're singles, they're not married yet. And God... <laughs> so you can keep praying for that. Maybe you might be able to see, you know, vision that, you know, <laughs> ladies, they're singles. They're single, <laughs> and they're very handsome people. So <laughs> this is beautiful. But before we jump into the into that subject, I just wanna remind you a little bit what I talked about last time. Uh, last time I said that assignment, um, that life is an opportunity that God has given us as a gift, and each of us God has given us 24 hours every single day and it depends on how we use those 24 hours that will determine our success or our position in this earth but all of us were here on the world um, 
uh, in a specific assignment that God has assigned us or designed us or created us for a specific reason and specific purpose. And so the purpose of this life is for us to figure out what is that assignment and to actually do it and to do it and to give glory to God because we are not living here for ourselves. God, he didn't just create us to, 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 to get a lot of money or to have beautiful cars, to have beautiful wife, even though I'm going to have a beautiful wife. But this, the, the, the reason is that for us, we'll, we'll get to the point where um, we'll give glory to God and God will be glorified through our lives. And, and, and for me personally, and I believe uh, these two young men also, we are, we are all uh, looking forward to um, what God has assigned us to do. Right. And at a time, we are, we, we are still doing what we feel like this is what God is calling us yeah. to do through worship, through this radio program, uh, through preachings, through friendships, through relationships, through different kind of things that we are doing. Uh, we, we believe that God is, uh, he, he will be magnified and He will be manifested through um, whatever that we'll be doing. So that is what I was talking last time and also I had a great interview with uh, Pastor Yoon discussing about what is going on you know, here in Korea, discussing about what is going on between South Korea and North Korea and also talk a little bit about um, the Joshua generation, that we are Joshua generation. Moses has already gone and we are Joshua generation. When God is looking down on earth, he's looking at us, say, hey young generation, now it's your time. And so I was talking to all old people, to all old people around the world that it's a time to let young people do the work or do what God has called them to do. It's not the time to hide them behind the walls, no. It's the time actually to let them stay on the stage, to let them lead, to let them uh, um, carry on the mission or the vision that God already started a long time ago through Moses. But at the same time, uh, the Moses generation will be there looking after them, uh, giving them advice as a model, as a father, as, as a guide and shepherd, just to lead them that, okay, this is the way that you guys are supposed to do. Because as a young generation, we cannot do anything, I mean, everything everything on our own. We need guidance, exactly. we need advisors, exactly. and this is the time for, for us actually to do it. But if we are not doing right now, after 20 years, what is it going to happen yeah. if old people will be gone? Yeah, imagine here in South Korea, I, I talked about the churches. When you look at the churches, there's a lot of old people. There's no young people. But imagine after 10 years, where the church will be? It's the time to give a young generation opportunity to do that. So uh, that's what I was talking about last time. And today we're going to keep talking about that, about assignment, and just seeing what God really um, is leading us to, to do that. So let's just jump in the topic, boys. Yes. Um, assignment. So let's begin with... Uh, God's power. <laughs> I, I like calling him GP because calling God's power is a little yeah. bit strange. You know? <laughs> uh, no, that's my name. <laughs> Talking about assignments, mm -hmm. when you've been assigned to do something, that is the only thing you should be doing on earth while you're breathing and living, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. talking about like uh, relating it to kingdom, kingdom like uh, works. Mm -hmm. You know, one big problem I've discovered in this in 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 our youth mm -hmm. is number. The first problem is discovering your assignment, mm -hmm. what what you've been set aside to do, mm -hmm. and the second thing is 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 actually doing them, yeah, doing exactly. that. <laughs> yeah. Because some of mm -hmm. us tend to give up because mm -hmm. you just stay. You of course you've discovered your assignment, mm -hmm. but at, at the same time you're like. But how can I do this? Yes, yes. And then you wait. Mm. And then you give up. Mm. But I want to say this, you know, I, I love speaking in parables. You mm. know, if a teacher gives you an assignment, mm. does the teacher come back and tell you how to solve it? <laughs> no, he doesn't. No. <laughs> One thing about God is he gives you an assignment. Mm. All right. <laughs> Maybe I'm too fast. <laughs> The spirit is already in me. <laughs> so when, when, when God gives you an assignment, mm. you know, uh -huh. That that period that that period of waiting mm -hmm. is actually a period of learning. That's right. God is teaching you what you need mm -hmm. for that final stage where uh -huh. he, you will now display what He has assigned you to come do. On, come on, come on! I love that. But some of us, mm -hmm. we are too. I, I don't know. I don't know how to put it in English. We are too. <laughs> in Korea, we are too normal. Kupada, pali pali. We are too fast. Yeah, we are too fast. We just uh -huh. want everything now, now. So 
the, the fact that God has revealed to you your assignment, mm-hmm. you just want it to happen now. But let me tell you something back yes. in the Bible. You know Samuel. Mm-hmm. God called him when he was a boy. Mm-hmm. But when God called him and, and when, when God called him and he answered, he did not start his ministry part immediately. No. That's right. He had to wait mm. for something to happen. It's mm. the same thing with David. Mm. David was anointed before he was appointed. Oh, mm. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 it up. <laughs> he was anointed, but he had to wait. Mm-hmm. That wait mm. He didn't waste his years waiting. No, mm. he was learning. Mm. Mm. He, he, he learned humility. He learned mm. patience. Mm. And maybe that's the thing. Like during that period of waiting, mm. you are learning what you need. That's what right. will sustain you when you actually start doing that assignment? Mm-hmm. That is what you know. You know the reason why some people they start and they fall, mm-hmm. like they go part, they go straight into that stage and they fall. Yes. It's because they don't. They, they they thought they were learning, but they didn't learn anything during mm-hmm. that period of waiting. Mm-hmm. And when God now takes you to the level He wants you to be, mm-hmm. now you fall. Why? Mm-hmm. Because you were empty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You were empty. Mm-hmm. You know one thing I've learned during this this period is um, mm-hmm. while you are passing through this process mm. god is teaching you stuff mm. and this stuff you are teaching he's teaching you maybe at that moment you might feel it's useless mm. but when you get to that level mm. you will see that it's actually important those are the stuff that will sustain you those are the, those are the stuff that will keep you going mm. when you are passing through a lot of stuff in life mm. and that is one thing about assignment you just mm. need to learn learn while waiting mm. wow that's beautiful. You preach good. <laughs> oh, I love that. I really love that's, that. That's why his name is God's power. <laughs> I think you feel the power of God as he was talking. <laughs> My name is God's grace from today. <laughs> Senor. Man, God's power really touched on something that really struck me so much. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, he said that firstly, you need to identify the fact that or mm-hmm. accept the fact that you are here on a mission. That's mm-hmm. right. And secondly, you actually have to set out mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. accomplish that particular That's mission. Cool. Mm-hmm. So there are two things involved, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and to me, it's really amazing. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is that it's not everybody. Some people haven't even really started on the first one. That's right. To discover why you are here, mm-hmm. I think it's even more important than even fulfilling it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dr. Miles Monroe once said mm-hmm. that the the greatest tra- tragedy in this world mm-hmm. is, is is not death, that's right, but being alive mm-hmm. and not knowing yeah. why. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and so it tells you the role that um, mm-hmm. identifying your purpose really how significant it mm-hmm. really is. Mm-hmm. Else you just be walking about, but already you are dead. Mm-hmm. But you are you are you are you are seen around just walking, mm-hmm. and 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 that's a, a really big tragedy, like you rightly said. That's right. Mm-hmm. So discovering your assignment mm-hmm. is actually something that I think every single person mm-hmm. must set out to do. Mm-hmm. It is not an option. Yeah. You don't decide whether or not to live by purpose. Mm-hmm. It is how mm-hmm. life ought to be lived mm-hmm. and so everyone listening to us tonight mm-hmm. I mean today mm-hmm. at the sound of our voice we encourage you mm-hmm. now if you don't have any particular faith in it I'll recommend the Bible because mm-hmm. that is what has worked for me mm-hmm. how do you know why you are here mm-hmm. first of all you need to consult your maker mm-hmm. just like if you buy a new product and you don't know how to use it there is a manual there that, that guides you as to how to operate it That's right. So consult the manual of your life. It is the Bible. Bible. Mm-hmm. The Bible has step a step-by-step approach to how to know who you are, discover your giftings, your calling, mm-hmm. and the assignment that you need to uh, fulfill in this earth realm. Mm-hmm. So I encourage you to, to study the Bible and also to pray. And as you engage in this process, mm-hmm. it doesn't happen overnight. That's right. But then you realize that there is a certain transformation in the way you begin to perceive the world around you. Mm. Your identity mm. will begin to make more meaning to you. Mm. The Bible says that for the endless expectation mm. of all creatures mm. waits the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm. What that really means is that the whole world is waiting for you That's right. mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. come on the scene and mm-hmm. do something. Mm-hmm. So it means that until you step out to discover your calling mm-hmm. and to operate in it, there are some things that will not be done mm-hmm. in this world. Mm-hmm. You know, there are some diseases that have not yet received cures because probably the cure is deep inside you. Mm-hmm. But you haven't yet realized it. <laughs> and so people are yeah. dying and going to their mm-hmm. early graves just mm-hmm. because you haven't stepped out to discover what you've been called That's to right. do. Mm-hmm. And so that makes it important. Mm-hmm. This is no longer an option. Mm-hmm. People are actually dying. Mm-hmm. 
because mm. you haven't discovered your calling. So mm. if you can see it from this angle and mm. take it very seriously, mm. you realize that knowing your assignment, mm. discovering it and operating on it mm. is very, very vital. That's right. People need you. Mm. And I'll end on this note. Some time ago, mm. I posted something on Facebook. Mm. I said, if you believe that God has called you to do something, mm. do it now. Mm. If now is not the right time, he mm. will let you know. Mm. Don't, don't hide behind the excuse of, mm. I'm waiting on God. Mm. Where, 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 whereas in actual fact, you are just mm. scared to make a this move. Mm. Mm. Because if God can call you the light of mm. the world, mm. that means that there is a darkness that you have been engineered to light. That's mm. right. So, so don't deny us what you carry. Mm-hmm. Just take a faith step mm-hmm. and grace will complete it. Wow. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Wow, there's, there's a power in this room right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. the, the energy. This room is too small for mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I, I, I want to ask you guys a question. All right? um, when did you discover mm-hmm. your assignment? Or when did you know your assignment? Mm-hmm. And... When did you start doing it? And how is it going? Even at this very moment? Because I know a lot of people right now are listening. A lot of people right now are listening. And they are wondering that, oh, these guys are talking about assignment. And I want to know my assignment. But I think if we give them the real example that, hey, this is when I knew that my assignment is this. Um, and and I started to pursue it. And how how your life has been before mm. and after you started to pursue the assignment mm. that God has given you. Senor. Mine began in high school. Mm-hmm. I was just hungry mm. and hungry to experience the supernatural. Mm. You know, I always wondered so much. Mm. You know, you know, there are things that you see in church settings, mm-hmm. even though you're a Christian, yes. but they don't make meaning to you. Mm. And you feel like asking questions, but... Mm. You are also wondering how you will be judged and perceived if you ask some particular question. Gospel, I don't know whether you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had doubts about so many things, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Mm -hmm. I took those doubts to God in prayer. That's right. Because I just wanted to, you know, Mm -hmm. understand him better. Mm -hmm. and, and, And know how he operates, you know, with the things regarding the supernatural. Mm -hmm. And so that hunger and thirst Mm -hmm. led me to prayer one night. Mm -hmm. And... That night I prayed like never before. Mm. I felt a totally different atmosphere mm. while I prayed. Mm. I prayed till I cried and I felt that there was this, this heaviness in my heart that began to lift up, mm. like lift off mm. me. And so in that space of time, I realized that I had an encounter. It was later on that I realized that, I mean, that's the name to describe such an experience, you know. So that changed my life. My prayer life changed, you know, from that point in time. And I realized that I could hear from God Mm -hmm. from that point onwards. Mm -hmm. And that ability to hear from God to me, I think that was the turning point. Because each time I prayed, I felt God was with me. And I could feel that there was something He was telling me to do. And so to know that God is instructing you to do something at every point in time you pray, Mm -hmm. to me, it was the biggest revival in my life. And that really set me off, you know, on a certain journey. Mm-hmm. Because from that point onwards, whatsoever I wanted to do, I, I could not be confident that if I asked God, He would tell me. That's right. Previously, mm-hmm. I knew I needed to pray, but I didn't know prayer could play such a significant role. Mm-hmm. So if you ask me about how I discovered my assignment in my college, mm-hmm. I think it was through prayer. Mm-hmm. And I think it was through persistent prayer mm-hmm. every day, and relying on God to lead me into the next steps to take. That was in high school. And so it continued. And I thank God for good company. You know, the Bible says that bad company corrupts good manners. That's right. I thank God for good company because as I'm speaking right now, it has not always been like that. There were days that I didn't feel like I should be in this 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 whole prayer thing. I mean you lift your voice and yet the words don't come out. So it wasn't as if I have been praying my whole life. Or spending time with God my whole life and enjoying His presence. No, there have been tough times. You know, there have been days that you actually even backslide. Like, I, I'm, I'm just fed up with this Christianity thing. And, you know, you just don't, don't want to, like, you know, spend time with God anymore because of some personal reasons. You know, but I thank God for good company. You know, along the journey, somewhere during my um, uh, college days. Yeah, good company really kept me going. And I think that 
that that that is another way that God can help you know your assignment through other people through the Bible says that our Lord the Lord our God does not do a thing unless he reveals to his servants mm -hmm. Prophets and That's prophetesses, right. exactly. and sometimes through dreams and visions. So God can use other people mm -hmm. to speak to you about what you have to be doing. Mm -hmm. Somebody called me one day and sat me down and advised me. Mm -hmm. He said, "Look, you, each time you pray, you lead prayer. I mm -hmm. feel God's presence. Mm -hmm. I think you should take this thing seriously. Mm -hmm. Take worship seriously. Mm -hmm. Take leading other people into God's presence seriously." Mm -hmm. And to hear that from another person was even more inspiring, of course. because. I had that impression that well I had to, you know something to offer the world in that direction but to hear somebody confirm it to you that way was really encouraging so I would encourage you if you really want to discover your assignment keep good company you know surround yourself with people who can who can inspire you and encourage you and that was how the whole journey you know set off and let me wrap it up wrap it up with this um Three months before I, I made my first journey here into South Korea, I was in prayer. I was praying, not because I wanted anything from God, but I was just praying because I felt my life was not in order. I felt too many things were scattered all around. I had just resigned from my job because I didn't think, I, I felt like, I mean, my mission there was completed. And I, I had no job, I had, I had no money. And I was sick. I was really sick at that time. So I was just praying for God to put my life in order and for me to get closer to Him. Then I heard Him speak to Him. This thing I always say, and people people doubt. I heard Him loud and clear. He said, "I'm sending you to the nations of the world, starting with South Korea." I wrote that statement right now. If you go to my room, you see it in front of my desk. Always reminding myself that look, Senor, God spoke these words to you many years ago. Never forget your calling, why you are here. And so that was how he started. God wow. spoke to me, told me specifically that I'm going to come here. Mm. And as at that time, I hadn't even gotten a scholarship to this place. Mm. I had only applied mm. to nine schools. Mm. And what God did amazingly was that eight of all those schools mm. rejected my applications. Mm. It was only the one I applied <coughs> to South Korea mm. that went through. Wow. And that was how I knew mm. that God had begun something great. Mm. And I purposed in my heart that every single day I will live in this country, mm -hmm. I will devote it to the glory of God. Amen. And so I'll encourage you all, mm. God speaks. Mm. And if you are really interested mm. in getting to know his voice and his and this assignment for you, mm. pray, surround yourself with good people. Amen. Direct you. Amen. Amen. GP. Yeah. You have you have, you have a few minutes. Yeah. Yes, the Senor, Senor took all the time, but um, wow. <laughs> that, that was powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, mm -hmm. you know, before I actually say my own short story, I would say, you know, to discover what you've been set aside in this world to do, you you first need to discover yourself in Jesus. Yeah. And that's the only way you can actually be happy and also mm -hmm. know what you've been set aside to do. Mm -hmm. Because you know, one thing, one thing I I have realized is. When you discover yourself in Jesus, there's always that one encounter you will have. Mm -hmm. that, and that, through that encounter, you actually know what you need to do mm -hmm. or what you've been set aside in this world to do. There's mm -hmm. just one encounter. And once you start doing that, there's always a confirmation. God mm -hmm. comes and confirms it through people mm -hmm. or through himself. He speaks to you. You know, God still speaks to people. Just like the, the stories we've been hearing, God still speaks. All we, we need to do is listen. Mm -hmm. For me, actually, mine... Mine started like six years ago, like just this, just I, I think two months before coming to Korea, mm. like uh, through through worshiping, mm. through that God actually revealed Himself to me, and also He made it known to me that hey, I'm take actually through a prophet, mm. He con confirmed it through a prophet that mm. called me and said hey, uh, God is sending you to do this and this and that and that. I was just saying that time because mm. I was not so into worshiping, so I, mm. I actually did not believe. Mm. But one, one thing about God is, God don't care who you are, mm. <laughs> where you're from or anything. He's, he just mm. sends you. When, once He sends you, mm. all you need to do is say yes, mm. and you start learning. Mm. And that's it. Mm. And that's, that's how God works. Mm. And so we are here, and God has been confirming that like we receive testimonies through yeah. worshiping, and it's just yeah. powerful. And, mm. you know, just like Senor said, you know, when, 
God sends other people to confirm the gift or the, the calling he has upon your life, it actually encourages you to do more. Mm. You, you feel, oh, I'm blessed, like, oh, thank you, Jesus, and you just want to do more. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. This is amazing, and I really believe this is, um, it's going to help somebody. I believe for uh, these couple of minutes we've been speaking to someone out there and the voice of God and the presence of God is in this place and God is touching you right now as we speak and just to wrap up uh, about everything that we we, we talked about today um, about assignment uh, there's one more thing that I really want to um, add to uh, and it was about waiting I know um, every, every single one of us we are really um, praying and maybe your, your, your desire is to know your assignment and maybe you've been praying for 10 years or for even more than that and you're waiting mm. and as Senyo said that waiting is not like the time for you to sit down and to kind of like wait without doing nothing the question that you're supposed to ask yourself is what are you doing during the waiting time when Jesus told his disciples that hey I'm going back to my father but wait here at Jerusalem I will send the Holy Spirit to come what they were doing at that moment some of them they were kind of like oh forget about this jesus you know they ran away they went back to their daily lives but few of them peter john and some other disciples the bible says that they locked themselves in the room and they were praying day and night while waiting for the promise of the holy spirit so waiting time waiting biblically it doesn't mean that you sit down and doing nothing Actually, waiting biblically, it means doing something. It means actually praying day and night, seeking the Lord. You remember the, even the, the story of Elizabeth and, 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 and her husband when they were waiting for the Lord about the promise of, of, of Johanna. The Bible says that because he was, um, he, was the, um, um, he was the priest, the Bible says that he was going he was going to pray to intercede for the people of Israel. He was going there daily to pray. He was going there to seek the Lord. And that's when uh, the God sent the angel and he spoke to him. And he promised that, hey, you're going to have the son and his name will be uh, called Johanna. So it's really interesting uh, to see uh, what God he wants us to do in the waiting time. That as you're waiting for your assignment, as you're waiting for the time that God has called you to step out and do something, you got to pray. Because in this kingdom, or what we are doing, we are not dealing with physical attacks, but we are dealing with the spiritual atmosphere, spiritual realms. And if you are not praying, if you are not preparing yourself spiritually, then pretty much you are not going to stand. Because the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is not going to be gained by uh, amount of money that you have, or bribe, or whatever, no. But by intimacy and relationship with God. So tonight... As I'm leaving you guys, or today as I'm leaving you guys, I want you to continue to think and to continue to pray about your assignment. But not just waiting, to continue actually to do. If God he will say, okay, don't do this, then you won't do. But, you know, as, as a son, sometimes we want to do something for our dad. Not just because they ask us to do, no. Because we love our dad and we want to do something for them. So that thing that you're thinking about doing for God, go out right now and start doing it. And God will bless it. And God will increase it his anointing his precious grace will be upon you and will see his hand leading you in each and every single step of your way hallelujah guys let's say last word and then we are out of here uh, for two seconds oh man it's a privilege to talk to you guys and i'm really pumped up about this and i i really hope that somebody's life will change after listening to this absolutely and, yeah I bless you guys and I pray for grace to discover who you really are. Amen. Amen. Senor, two seconds. Honestly, it's been a privilege. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, everyone who have heard what we've shared mm -hmm. and those who are yet to discover their callings mm -hmm. through this yes. will discover their callings and serve God for the rest of their lives. All right. Amen. Guys, God bless you and I'll see you next time. Shalom. Shalom.